Let us pray. Dear Father, Lord thank you for the gift of your word. The entrance of your word gives light. Therefore, their Father, Lord as your word comes now, let it enter the bones, marrows, and chromosomes of every listener to expel every form of ignorance and their inherent limitations. Let your people enjoy the freedom, peace, and dignity that you have promised them, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth I pray. Amen. The Power of God's Word The power of God is in His Word. With His Word, He created the world and all that is in it. As we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. And God has given us the gift of His Word to continue the work of creation and to be able to produce our desires. Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, the Bible says. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. In verse 5, of the same Genesis chapter 1. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 6, Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Verse 8, And God called the firmament heaven. So the evening and the morning were the second day. Verse 9, Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. Verse 10, And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Verse 11, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself, on the earth, and it was so. Verse 14, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons, and for days and years. Verse 20, Then God said, Let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. Verse 22, And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. Verse 24, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind and it was so. And so it continued until God created all things and named them. And that is how powerful the Word of God is. Without words, creation would have been difficult, if not impossible. And Jesus Christ happened to have been the Word responsible for the creation before he was made flesh through the same Word, according to John 1 verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Which means that Jesus, the Word, was also a product of the Word as flesh and blood. Nothing can be more powerful or too powerful for God to do with His Word. Prior to Jesus being made flesh, the Bible says, in John chapter 1, from verses 1 through 4. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, for the Word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And in Psalms 138 verse 2, it says, I will worship toward your holy temple, and praise your name. For your loving kindness and your truth, 
for you have magnified your word above all your name. Here we see the premium that God places on the word. And when God wants to do anything, he only sends his word, and his word goes and accomplishes his wish. This was clearly stated in Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them, and delivered them from their destructions. Which means that, when God wants to heal or deliver, he sends or speaks only one word to our situations, and it takes effect. This act is also associated with human kings and authorities. We saw the reply of the centurion to Jesus in Matthew 8. Then the centurion whom Jesus healed his daughter aptly understood how this works. Hence, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 8 to 10, the Bible says, The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. But only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes, and to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. Now, that was about a man of authority as regards to what human powers and authorities can accomplish with their word. And remember that human usage of authority by word is just a partial microcosm of what God can do with his word. If man's words can be that powerful, how much more the words of the Almighty, all-powerful God. But unique in God's word is that all the children of God share the right and privilege to use his word to create and or produce their desires. God has authorized believers to appropriate his words to secure their needs and places in life. But the question is, as a believer, what are you doing with the word of God as it has been made available to you? The word of God as it is available to you is as powerful as a machine gun and or weapons of war in the hand of a soldier. You can use God's word to destroy the vicious circle of poverty, delays, slavery, lack and wants, barrenness and childlessness, near success syndrome, and a host of other negative influences orchestrated by the devil. Just as a soldier can use his weapon to compel his enemies into submission or surrender. I heard a story of a woman stricken with barrenness. Each time the woman prays for God's intervention, a voice mutters to her, Why? Or where was it written? And since the woman is not rooted in the word, she has no answer to the devil, and she wallowed in barrenness for years until the day her rights through the word were unveiled to her, and as she applied them, the siege of barrenness was humiliated out of her life. Having said that, however, we must understand that there is a difference between having the word and knowing how to use or apply it in our situations. A person who has a gun but does not know how to use it will not record any victories with it and will not command the fear or respect of his enemies if they understand that he cannot use it. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This means that the Word of God is effective and more efficacious than even human weapons for gaining compliance, cooperation, and submission. Therefore, to get maximum results from the Word of God. 1. It must be mixed with faith. In Hebrews 4 verse 2, the Bible says, For indeed the Gospel was preached to us as well as to them. But the word which they heard did not profit them, a, not being mixed with faith in those who heard it. If the word of God is not mixed with faith, it won't give any results. 
God doesn't honor his word spoken or uttered without faith. Number 2, it must be uttered and spoken with a sense of boldness. In Job chapter 22, verse 28, the Bible says, You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. Number 3, you must be a God seeker. We can see this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Number 4, you must be thankful to God. Let us look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Number 5, you must pray in the name of Jesus Christ. We can see this in John 14, from verses 13 to 14. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Let us pray. Dearest Everlasting Father, thank you for the gift of your word. Sanctify every listener who has heard and listened to your word. Lord let your word in their mouth from henceforth be strong, mighty and in all capability in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you dearest Father Lord for your answer, for in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.